It feels like um, we've got like the industry and our side. We have to design for everyone, especially in emerging markets, who uh, they suffer from like you know connectivity issues. Mm. But if I'm like a business in say um, East London, and I'm only catering for people there, it almost feels like a wasted effort to try and design for like another part of the world or another sort of community. It's like mm. I'm spending a lot of time and energy making things as small as possible. It just seems like I'm again another thing that's restricting my yeah. design ability. It seems like every sort of um, yeah. innovative step in design seems to be followed by, right now designers, you have to do something else, which yeah. is really frustrating. I mean, it just feels frustrating. It's like responsive web design was frustrating. Um, <laughs> like these things are like, because you know, we want this kind of pixel perfect world and like with yeah. really graphical, but it seems like, again, so, so what's, I suppose the question is, what is the point in designing yeah. for people who I may not be my market? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I take your point. Okay, I, I think there's two ways to cut this. Um, firstly, if you're designing for a global audience, well, you know, you better think about everyone everywhere. You better think about people that are coming online for the first time in these regions where huge numbers of people, the largest numbers of people are coming online now. Um, the second, you know, the second approach is where you've got like a local product, you know, something like a restaurant site, whatever. Well. Actually, you know, designing is really going to be done in the same way as you would do for those uh, people anywhere. So you need to think about uh, data cost and flaky connectivity offline, all those things. It's the same principles of design. Um, you know, it, it doesn't matter where you're designing for. It's those same principles that you need to cover. So it's that really that attitude. It's not about designing for emerging markets. It's learning from those the contexts markets, yeah. and then applying that to uh, web design everywhere. So what do you think about the restrictions? I mean, because I know you've in the past, you've worked for like, yeah. the, the, yeah. the traditional print yeah, old yeah, school. That's right. So you have yeah. like a very good, yeah. strong typesetting background as well. Yeah, sure, sure. I mean, I, yeah, I used to, uh, for many years, I worked as a typesetter, uh, worked with a great uh, design team, uh, a record company. And, uh, you know, I, I think one of the things I really noticed there was the way really good designers responded to constraints, you know. Uh, you think about, I don't know, like black and white photography yeah. or geotone prints, whatever. Their responses to, you know, restrictions on the medium that you're using. Um, and, you know, we need to have the same attitude for web design. Uh, we need to be thinking about how do we respond to the real world, you know. like. Be honest about uh, about your product. I remember, like when I worked with really good designers, uh, working on uh, product packaging and so on, they would go out to a shop and they would, you know, stand there on the other side of like whatever it was in those days, like Tower Records or whatever. They would look at their CD and they'd go, eh, "That looked, you know, pretty good in the studio." Now. From the other side of the shop, you know what? I can't see what it is. Yeah, so designing in context yeah. and seeing yeah. the thing in, in exactly. real world. And the web equivalent of that is you get a phone, a cheap phone, you take it out somewhere where you're not got go, you know, great connectivity, you see how your website works in that context. It kind of reminds me of like when we used to design logos. Um, one test would be to send a fax with the letterhead yeah. to see, because that's yeah. the real world. People would see yeah. like, and then you see how like in a dot matrix printer, how the logo looks. Yeah. So, because that nice pristine thing is not necessarily the thing that's going to be produced in the real world. No, that's right. And you can do the same, you know, like look at your stuff with uh, throttling and Chrome DevTools. Or, yeah. or if you can, you know, actually use, uh, you know, throttled network, network emulation. Um, but, you know, just go out into the real world. Designing for a budget is quite hard because we try yeah. to shoehorn everything at the end. This is, I think, one yeah. of the, I think yeah. the real issue, um, that you're trying to redesign the thing once the vision has been done, which is where the frustration comes. But how do you actually think about because yeah. really we need to be thinking about the design beforehand, not at the end. Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm, in a, I'm a great believer in performance budgets, um, you know, establishing a budget for, perform for performance uh, and for data cost. Um, you know, just like in the old days you would with print, you still do with print. You look at production costs, materials you can use and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, establish that before you're going into a web project and then stick to that and be honest about that. And who do you think, I mean, who are like the people that we can learn from? Who are the pioneers at the moment? I, look, I, I think, um, you know, thinking about images, um, you know, it's very important to develop uh, like an image uh, strategy. And this is something actually that uh, my colleague, uh, our colleague Ava has been talking about just at Google I.O. Yeah. If you check out her talk there. Um, you know, images are a huge deal. Uh, images are still 
the biggest data cost for most web pages by far and the largest number of requests. Um, this has big knock-on effect for, you know, for CPU, memory and so on, but also just the number, the usage of the radio from the number of requests. Yeah. And this again on mobile is a huge deal because you know, it means you have images uh, using more battery. Um, you know, so if you do nothing else, I would say just you know, look at your images, uh, look at, you know, say your hero images on a site like background images, yeah. banners and so on. Optimise them, you know, compress them as much as you can. Make sure the pixel dimensions are no bigger than they need to be. Every extra pixel is extra memory, you know, is An a big space, deal. Yeah. yeah, is a big deal on a mobile phone. So do you know much about the designers in those regions? Because usually the pioneers come out of yeah. restrictive environments, yeah. right? It's interesting, yeah. That, that stuff like, um, you know, we can really learn from uh, from regions where the fastest number, of, you know, most people are coming online. Uh, like if you look at, uh, you know, developers in like Mumbai or uh, Bangalore, they're designing for these contexts where, you know, 2G is often the norm. And what we've seen there, like, you know, we saw this with uh, like companies like Flipkart and, and, and you know, housing.com in Bangalore. They realised that they could access a much bigger audience by designing for them. Yeah. And, you know, that's really worked for them in terms of, uh, you know, conversions. It's, it, you know, there's a business case there. Companies and sort of like designers what could be missing out on a market which they're not tapping into simply because they're not doing designing for yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, it's chicken and egg. You know, if you design to give people access, then you can expand your audience and so on, and that can snowball. Native apps are better in this way because of they're more performant and they do this. It's just like, well, no, it's just the web can do that. It's just you have to put the time and effort into it. Don't just see it as switch platforms and then all the problems are fixed.